Hi, Mandra Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. Yes, those of you on my Patreon or, or Patreon or on Discord have seen my recommendation of my kits that I was going to do, and I sent a big old list of kits, but you've jumped ahead. You could not wait. So not many of you made this one yet, but quite a few of you have made this one, which is the laser harp. Laser harp. And uh, at the heart of this kit, let's have a look. See, it's pretty easy to work out here. You've got a bunch of, la uh, I was going to say lasers. No, these are just diodes here. They're LEDs, but interestingly enough, I don't know why they're doing it. They're coming from uh, VCCs. So they have power here, and they're being driven to ground through the micro itself. So curious why they're doing that. I don't know if there's any pattern going on with those, but there could be. At least it means the micro can actually control those if it wants to. I suspect they're going to be on all the time, but who knows? I could be laying. In fact, hmm, I'm talking poo-poo. You know why? Because down here, look, these are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven LEDs that will be permanently connected. And then they're going to be shining on some LDRs, which are here. So that's how it's detecting your hand breaking the laser beam. And these are indicator lasers. So these must flash in accordance to these. So when this is triggered, this one flashes. So I guess it's just an indicator. So that's why the uh, microcontroller is driving that down. By the way, it's an STC89C52RC. And we're seeing, we're seeing more and more in-circuit programmer options for this, although I don't have the specs for that. This is the timing crystal. And you can see the combination of the crystal and you've got these capacitors to make sure it's uh, decoupled so it doesn't mess up. Works fine in there. And then there's a couple of buttons here. One says music and one says cut. Not sure what those do, but we'll figure that out. But interestingly, you've got a bell here. So I think that's a buzzer and it's being amplified by a transistor here and it says Beal. <laughs> Beal. And you can see it's just NPM transistor. Nice simple circuit. Copy that if you ever need to do something there. And interesting here, you've got VCC and you've got LED, L, M and H. Could be low, medium and high, perhaps? Is there a switch? I can see from this part of the circuit, low, medium and high. And Beal and music. Music is a switch input. So yeah, interesting stuff. I think we might as well just crack on and start assembling it, really. See what's in the kit. So I'm going to put this piece of paper down and we'll tip it out. Okay, there's a... F ooh. Ooh. Ooh, uh. First mistake I made is put it on the piece of paper that shows a picture of how it goes together because we're going to need that. So this is a power lead because it's just a USB that terminates in a jack. You can see the jack right there. Won't get that out of the bag just yet. Just going to shift these off over here. Right. What else do we have? Laser diodes. So laser diodes, quite pleasing. Very easy to use, by the way. Just make sure you get the polarity right and you get your own freaking lasers. Now, these are really cheap on eBay. You can buy a big bag of 10 or something for a fiver. And then we've got these various bits of PCB that are acting as a kind of gantry. So effectively, and I'm pretty sure we've got to snap these, he, said, he hopes. Um, one's gonna go that away, and then one's gonna go that away. Let's see, making a little gantry, how cute! And then at the end, we're gonna put that on there, and it'll shine all the LEDs down. I say LEDs, lasers. And then you've got these, which are the uh, light sensitive, res well, photo resistors. I can't remember what they're called. We call them LDR, light dependent resistors. So that's all they do. When light hits that, it varies the resistivity. The microcontroller will pick that up. And then they clearly have this piece of, I think it's probably heat shrink. It might not be. It doesn't look like it needs shrinking anyway. And they're going to pop that over there. And that's to stop ambient light hitting it. So only the laser will go in this hole and shine it all up. So it's a pretty simple design. Then we've got the IC, which is all bent up legs and stuff but we'll unbend that one when we come to it few resistors unfortunately they look like they're all the same value thank heavens because you know i don't like messing with various value resistors and the actual socket that we've got <laughs> we actually got here a pin <laughs> i noticed that and that's 
one of the pins that comes out of this socket. So if I turn that in the light, you'll see it'll be missing a pin. I can see that right there. So we'll be able to fix that. In fact, I'm going to do it now so we don't lose that. Pop it Attacking in. one leg of all the resistors in because I've good chance that they've slipped out while I've been gassing. Got that in there. Good. So far, so good. Let's check this out. Hmm, a couple of them have slipped, but not as by as much as you'd think. So that's not too bad. Push that home. Push that home. Push that home. One more. Nice. Okay. It's all right. Do you? I suspect. They're trying to use a PNP to get a higher emitter collector current, make it a bit louder. So we're not we're not going to be too annoyed if it's not massively loud. We just want it to work at this point. We can tune it later. I can't try to remember. I'm sure I needed a PNP transistor not too long ago, and uh, I managed to find one in my box of tricks, but. Maybe I was just imagining it. Come on, my spiky magnets needs uh, cleaning, I think. Cut off all the leads. And this is that handy one, by the way, if you haven't got one. You want to get one like this, which has an extra little blade thing there that stops the legs from poinging off. You wouldn't think you needed one until you use one, and then you'd be like, it's a lot of trouble came back. Right, let's clean up that. Okay. So just the last of these resistors, the 1K ones. Because there's that slightly fiddly mechanical issue with the LDRs, I'm going to probably leave those to last. I'm just, I do have something actually in a box, not too far away from me. We can try. I do have some ceramic spacers, so let's see if they're not too big. We could try putting a ceramic spacer on one of the legs of each one. If you've got anything like a bead, you know, little kiddie beads for their bracelets or whatever, even that might do to get some sort of consistency. I'm looking at these heat shrinks that this came with and each one sort of cut randomly. There's just no consistency in the uh, factory on how long each one was. They just sort of go, yeah, that's close enough. Get the kit out the door. So looking at the boards, well, each LED is marked not only with its number and everything, but does actually have the uh, note. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, si. So you've not even got, what, it's like one, one octave. Not sure what you're going to be able to play with that. There's no register shift. That would be cool to add though, wouldn't it? There was a button there that says cut. I wonder what cut does. It would be neat if there was a button you can press to give you an extra uh, octave up. That would be something actually worth having a go at because you can see there isn't in circuit programmer here so technically you could retask this to make it way more useful come on bloody through hole last resistor And it's a good one. Right, let's get them wanged in. Wang being the technical term, of course.
You might hear that noise in the background. That's the sound of my PC turning itself on. I am bloody frustrated with the whole technology of mice being able to trigger PCs out of standby because no matter how much I seem to set these and tell them not to do it, they just end up bloody doing it again. So I don't know whoever thought that was a good idea. You're wrong. Okay, got that, got that, got that. Let's get in here. Good stuff. It's like a bloody war there, war zone. I appreciate actually that I'm not very chatty today. I hope that's okay with you. You're probably uh, happier that way actually. It's just fine. No, Andrew, you just, you just chill there. Build your little kit. Clear LED, Rona. So remember, if you look at the board, positive is the anode, negative is the uh, cathode, a long leg positive, it says just up there long leg positive never a more useful thing was ever written so you've got a positive little uh, line there we're going to put the long leg to the top i have to say i'm really looking forward to building the little bridge part of this i think that's uh, it's got me curious now it's definitely got me curious i'm bridge curious Please be enough. There is. For all the white LEDs. At least LEDs are something that we're not normally short of in our little workshops, are we? We've all got a few bags of LEDs lying around. Okay. I suspect all of those LEDs are going to fall through. Not to worry. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. Surprisingly, not as wonk as you think. I have seen these rather sexy looking silicone electronic sort of construction mats recently. I have to say they look rather fetching. But, you know, I do try a lot of these things and it never seemed to last. I always go back to the basics. Why change now? Ooh. Give it more solder. Good. Seems like we're good to go with those. By the way, the uh, whole thing that stops these springing off doesn't work if you do more than one leg at a time, but. I'm very impatient today. Just want to get those LEDs fitted. Right. What else? Looks like we've got three LEDs to fit here. Three LED, three red LEDs. curious to us uh, you know, the operation of this just have no idea what it could be now there is a bit of pin header for putting the ICSP in which is really interesting I mean I wonder if these are sold as a sort of part of a kit to go with that chip really as a just a sort of as universities or something it might be China's answer to the, the pick 
But I thought when I read the data sheet, they're uh, running something interesting though. They're, it's like, I don't know, like a Z80 or something. It's not, um, or is it the same thing that's in a Commodore 64? It's something like that anyway. It's a, it's a kind of traditional CPU core. It's not a, uh, ow. It's not like a PIC or microchip PIC where it's their own thing and it's not like ARM. It's just something else. I guess it's to, uh, avoid paying royalties to the appropriate uh, SOCIP holder. That's fine. Should have quite a lot of resources then to program it. But it might require you to be able to speak Chinese unless the document's been translated. And sort of probably not so much incentive to translate those documents right now. Okay, so we'll do the crystal and that's pretty simple. You can see it's a 12 megahertz. There's a little 12 on there. 12 meg crystal. Might have to resort to tweezers here. Pop that in the hole like so. Now we need a lot of hands because I don't want it falling out while I'm trying to solder it. So What I'm going to do a little trick here of just bang, just like that, and just like that. And I put a little blob of solder right in that pin, which I wouldn't want to. Give myself a little bit of extra work for putting in this 30, it looks like a 30 picofarad ceramic cap. And that's going to be an utter whore. Well, I managed it, not a problem. That's the one. Got three caps in the kits. I wonder if they've given us an extra one or if there's another one. I haven't spotted yet. Now, interesting enough, I do have some of those baby boomer boards lying around, so we could uh, totally pimp up this <laughs> <laughs> and drive a, a much larger speaker. Oh, I could do that, couldn't I? Make it like a kiddie's toy and give it to uh, give it to a kid of your least favourite person. That would work quite nicely, wouldn't it? It's like giving a drum machine to somebody, but it'd be more annoying because it's like, sorry, a drum machine. A drum machine would be awesome, wouldn't it? If your kid's got a drum machine, but a drum set. That's what I meant. Ooh. Interestingly enough, oh, there it is. Phew. Oh, starting to panic here because there's a 10 microfarad right there. Electrolytic. So by the way, where the shaded reason it is on there, that's normally the uh, negative. So that matches with the negative stripe. You see it white there? The white stripe of that. But it's in at an angle, so they've put it in and they're sitting it on its side just like that. So you just bend it over. Again, we're doing a lot of this holding the solder type trickery. Like this says USB. So have we said a footprint here for an actual USB, but that's the DC. God, look how many. I don't know if you can quite catch that, but they've got footprints here for loads of different variants of DC jack. But yeah, we'll fit that now, just for fun. We've got no real uh, order to do things in at this point. We can just do it as we like. All of the critical things are down. And that is in where it should be. Oh, bollocks. Pardon my French. Look, there's our little lad there. Hiding away. Let's get this transistor out. Ooh. 
would have been interesting to try it, wouldn't it? With the, maybe we should have just tried it with the MPN to see what would happen. Put that aside. So our holes are pretty much filled at this point. So you can sort of see an extraction now. We're going to fill them up with solder. Right there. Just going to use a solder sucker on them. Isn't doing the trick because they're jumping around. Let's do it from this side. No, no good. Could get out some solder wick, do it properly. Yeah, we could. Are we going to do it half acidly? Yes, better. So. What I'm going to do is attempt to line up the component whilst heating it from the other end. And you saw me do that earlier on something, so it's just the same process. But if you're doing it at home and you're going to do it properly, you can either get a better solder sucker or some solder braid or solder wick, I think it's called in uh, certain territories. So that's the one pin. Come on. Dag nam it. It's just got a piece of wire on its own. <laughs> so that homebrew homebrew solder uh, braid there. So I'm not applying any extra solder, I'm just pushing a wire through it and then pulling it out the other end. The idea being that you hope it's caught enough solder on its passage through. And don't use one like this which has got a kink in the end so it just gets jammed up. Okay, straighten that out. Okay. There we go. Rinse and repeat. So if you can see that, you've got one clean hole now. <laughs> it's a lot of work. If you're going to spend time putting bits of wire through it, you might as well put the component in. <laughs> Done. Okay, let's clean up. So the last thing here is looks like our speaker. Another positive and negative there. That's the way. out so that's the way it looks with the cutout forwards a couple of tack switches and uh, I think we're almost there with this side obviously apart from the LDRs on the back oh, crikey managed to totally bend the tack switch foot must take more care that was my teachers used to write that a lot on my work there. Must take more care. Did I though? Did I? Hell. Fact. I was just turning through hole components into surface mount, aren't I, when I do this, jam them through. Bend the legs. Oh, that PC that just shut itself off, I swear, you can hear it, it just turned itself back on again. It's crazy. I think it's a possessed mouse or possessed keyboard. Now, somewhere in Windows, it does say something like, this device can bring the machine out of sleep. 
and it's really weird. I thought it was just generic, but I think when I've changed my mouse, I'm sure it's changed, like it follows the profile of the specific device, not the, the general class, but damn, it's annoying. Right, tax switch is in. I sold that from the top, by the way. You saw me do that, but okay. I'll touch it up from the bottom there. That's fine too. Some of you are purists. Bottom, top, either way is good. Right. It is in. So I was just about to shove that computer through the wall, but it turns out it was Microsoft doing it. It's a Windows update. So I don't know how they bloody managed to make your PC turn itself back on to do that, but they can and have. So that's the beads. They're quite massive, really, if you see the sizing, but... Hmm. I don't know. They're worth a go, aren't they? Let's have a go with them. Will they fit that way? Nope. Yeah, they do fit that way though quite nicely. Let's roll with it. You gotta roll with it. You gotta roll with it. You gotta roll with it. Lyrically challenged. Pop that in. God, there seems to be loads of these. It's almost like an infinite number when you're sort of counting them out. So you could use, sometimes you can use other things instead of LDRs in circuits. You can use little solar cells if you've got that. But I heard, well, you can use that, of course, but you can, I heard though, you can actually use LEDs. And I've not tested that recently, but we should test that. See, when you shine a light on an LED, does it do anything weird? Does it generate a current or does it change resistance or some parameter? There's something like that. I hope I'm not going mad. But there is a difference between a um, LDR and a photodiode. So I guess an LD, LD, LED could be a uh, act like a photodiode, just a really inefficient one. But then what does a photodiode do? I'm guessing a photodiode might allow a reverse flow of current if it's got enough light could be that right so these are going to need a tack a tack and tuck tuck back in I suspect at this point you could almost power this circuit and it should do something Cut look at that one that one was well escaped Back. Get over here. I'll start with that one. This is so bad. Whoa, that's hot. These sure are conductive. So, if any of you bought this kit with the intention of doing something specific in mind. I think I'd be curious as to your use case for one of these. Or perhaps you're, you know, in a band and you are looking for that new sound. The new sound of Jean-Michel Jarre. Speaking of Jean-Michel Jarre, isn't it about time someone did a Captain Blood remake? I think so, right. We 
Oops. Clearing the decks. Yeah. I think while we can, let's get our little covers on those. So because LED light has this interesting property that only a bit will have to hit it, I think aiming these shouldn't be too tricky. Oh, sugar, what's that? That LDR actually has a crack in it. Let me zoom in and show you. Do you see there's a little crack across there? So that one may be damaged, but we'll see. We'll just continue. We might have lost a note. We've lost dough. Dough. Okay. So here's our IC, pretty bent up. Too much on that one. Nice work. There, and it's in. So I think this is a good opportunity to get some power in it, see what it can do. So I've got my USB power supply here. Don't foresee it doing any damage, but I'd expect it to make some sort of noises or something once we get this thing on here. But because it's a brake beam setup, actually, it'll probably try to play all the notes at once. So that'll be interesting in itself if it manages to do that. Get the speaker on. Speaker's in, get the power lead connected. Ooh. It's got demo mode. It's not bad actually, it's a bit like a doorbell. see that there that was shifting remember it's all about maybe like an octave shift interesting okay 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 steady on how much light's required to activate these now but sort of seems to be more than we've got hmm I suspect we could probably put our uh, lasers in kind of a little bit hesitant check the polarity here but just check something mm, nope yeah, laser is on. If you saw that there briefly. Yeah. Let's hook up the rest then. I don't think it's going to play ball till we've got the uh, rest on. That away. So we've got to assemble this little bridging device here. So we'll put those sound. It's got some sort of tags. They're just solder tags, effectively. So we're soldering this into place. Pop that. 
let's see, they seem to be double sided, so it doesn't matter which way around they go. Too tight. Perfect all. Perfect all. Just going to tin it. Tin both, actually. I don't have enough hands, so we need to tin both. Just like that. So I'm putting a lot more solder on this side because I can. And then when that's hardened, I'll go back and put a little bit more on the other. And I'll, I'll zoom in on that, show you what that looks like. But it's like a if you if you're into welding, you're just putting in a fillet. And it is a kind of a welding, isn't it? Kinda. So you could see there. Focus, focus. Just a couple of fillets right in there, and that's pretty good actually. I'm trying to bend that. It isn't. It's not bending. It doesn't want to bend. So good, good. Let's continue. If that would stay there, it could make life so much easier for me. But it won't. Your mileage may vary at home. I suspect though it'd be pretty much the same kind of issues. <laughs> Now, before I put the second one on there, I just want to line this up to make sure this is looking sensible. Ah! So I probably should have assembled this bit first because you got to get in there. It's looking a little bit wonk. I will admit, it's looking a bit wonk, but not too bad. So the volume's on maximum. I'm not hearing any hiss, which is, I don't know, worrying. Mm -hmm. Ah, reassuring. Let me get an audio source, and we'll see what this sounds like. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put the volume down just to be sure. And we have our favourite no copyright music from SoundCloud, and it is of course Joe Kim Karoo. Right, my glue gun is pretty much warm enough. I don't think it's quite warm enough, but it's fine. That first one we soldered in looks okay. So I'm just gonna adjust the second one. And you can see what I'm doing is just lining this up so it goes inside that and you'll see it. When you've got it right, it'll reflect really brightly. You'll see it reflecting in the side of the heat shrink in there, so. Blop. Oh, do I have to hold it here now till it hardens? Bugger. Get bored. <laughs> this may take some time. So if you hold it at a, just the right angle, you can stare down there. But be careful; that light is reflecting back into your eye. And your eyes are going to get pretty tired or melt out of your head or something. So don't uh, look too much at that reflection. You'll have a big old headache for the rest of the night. And I don't need that. No sure Let's get this next one on. Trying, of course, not to disturb. Right, maybe I'll do every other one. <gasps> did you see that? I just did the shorting out there again. Mm. I love a bit of shorting out these things. Don't we all? Got that there, just shining on there. So if you're not um, in the Discord, it might be worth having a think about that if you're into the old electronics because there's a lot of good support in there. There's a lot of good people in there ready to help you. And I'm going to do a big Discord shout out because I never really um, used it before, but now uh, we're so much more active as a community and, and a sort of patron and Discord community, which is sort of in harmony. It's beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. I think it's time to, you know, really start extolling the virtues. I was going to say of being a back officer, which is is not really. I'm not trying to uh, label anybody as part of a kind of club or cult, <laughs> but I do really appreciate everybody who does take the time 
say hi or drop by it, who interact with each other to help out it's a, it's a nice old thing right I think we're almost there you just got a couple of errant ones so if you've got kids you'll probably want to uh, hello you'll probably want to do a bigger dose of this and I may well do that starting to play ball a bit now isn't it I can tell you why momentarily oh, let's get this off no but if it's off I can't see what I'm doing damn it Good. Last one, and it will be quiet after that. Ah. So the reason it was making some sounds there is because when you had lots of these lasers out of alignment, it was as if all the channels are off at once, going off at once like that and it doesn't know what to do so you're basically running it's running in a confused state so it tended not to do make any sound but once you start to get them in alignment it starts to behave there you go Woo -hoo -hoo. it is quite cool actually oh and you need that has one of our lasers gone awry already that was the one we just set excited didn't wait for the old glue gun to uh, harden so if you want to once you've done that it's probably a good idea you should probably just go through again and that's why when you saw in the picture it had some huge blobs on it they probably just went through and gave it all a nice big second coating a second helping of the glue gun glue that's it like that and what I might just do while I'm here no oh. One's given us trouble. <laughs> the reason it's giving us trouble because we just hit it with goo gun glue again. We've melted the previous layer. But what I might just do, what I was about to say, was I'm going to glue the speaker down. Stay, boy, stay. This one. Come on. No. Maybe we'll do a jump cut, shall we? But I'm happy to say we're done. Look. Woohoo! Now this button here, right down there, that is the octave. So you can so just a basic operation. Right, basic stuff. But then if you push this, it doesn't seem to let you push it though whilst you're in a channel. So that's it really, I mean to actually play a tune on that you're going to have to put some practice in. So you've got your test button that goes through the built in songs, your octave selecting button, Ugh, let's unplug that for a moment shall we. Um, I've actually put a tiny blob here of glue along here just to keep those little guides aligned and then I've got my glue along the top which I did fanny around with. It's kind of cool isn't it I mean it's not the sort of thing that's gonna sit stably on your shelf so and I don't know how much you're gonna play with it okay so let's try this right so we got do re mi fa sol la ti 
do. It's easy how to switch that up. Do re do re mi fa so la ti do. Re mi fa so la ti do. <laughs> so yeah, enjoy making some sweet, sweet music with that kit. It's a lot of fun, it's a bit fiddly, but yeah, it's quite interesting for the money. Go on eBay, go on Alibaba, and as ever, thanks for watching.